Hi everyone, this is Jack Yang from Stanford University. Today, on behalf of my co-author Tuo Chaochen, Fang Qin, as well as my advisors Monica Lam and James Lande, I'm here to present HyperTrack, adding full body tracking to VR using an off-the-shelf webcam. So, full body tracking is very important for VR. It improves immersion in social VR apps, and it is also essential for functionality in sport VR apps. However, common full-body tracking systems need multiple anchor sensors, which is complex to set up. More convenient VR systems use this egocentric camera. They are growing popularity, but they have high distortion and low accuracy on the legs. So let's take a look at why this is the case. On the left, we have an egocentric camera view. As you can see, it has a better view of the user's hands, but not so good with the user's legs. The user's body commonly occludes their own legs. On the right, we have a webcam anchored to the world. This gives us a clear view of the user's legs at almost all times, but the user's hand can be occluded by their own body. That's why commonly full body tracking systems need multiple sensors anchored to the world. This system has very specific constraints on where the cameras are located. This is so that the user's hand are always visible to at least one of the sensors. What if we can create a hyper tracking system that uses both cameras to get less occlusion? Then we have much less constraints on where we place the cameras, and that is what we have done with HyperTrack. It works by processing 2D poses from a single webcam and 3D poses from an egocentric upper body VR tracking camera. We use a pose conversion network. To generate VR poses that can be used in any full-body tracking app supported by Steam VR. To make HyperTrack work, we used data augmentation and a synthetic dataset. Specifically, we solved two problems. One is that 2D pose tracking does not work well with the VR headset on the user's face. The second is lack of data available to train the pose conversion network. For 2D pose tracking, we used PoseResNet trained on the Coco dataset. However, people's faces captured in the original dataset are almost always visible. While using VR, the model sometimes thinks that the user is facing backwards because lack of direct sight of the user's face. This causes user's lag tracking points to be flipped in the wrong direction. We fix this by generating synthetic images by overlaying a 3D model of a VR headset on top of the faces in existing images in Coco dataset. With this augmentation, our model generates much better 2D tracking results. Another problem is how to train the pose conversion network. We can obviously ask a lot of people to wear VR full body tracking sensors to collect a new dataset, but that would be very expensive. Or we can instead use existing dataset like Human 3.6M, but this dataset has very different tracking points. VR tracking points are usually six points with position and orientation. While the Human 3.6M dataset is composed of 16 points with position only, so we created this conversion that interpolates the 17 points and calculate the transforms to generate similar six-point format with both position and orientation for each point. With this, we can create a new model without needing to collect a new dataset. Okay, so let's see the system in action. On the left, we have the 2D pose tracking result. On the right, we have the predicted six 3D tracking points with associated positions and orientations. Specifically, we have the user's head, hands, waist, and feet tracking points, similar to those provided by a commercial full-body tracking system. Okay, so it looks pretty good when rendered on this 2D flat screen. What about in an actual VR app? To see how well this system works for actual users in a social VR app, we compared HyperTrack to both a depth camera-based tracking system, which is called Kinect to VR, and the upper body only tracking. In this study, we invite participants from public chat room in VR chat to observe an experimenter performing multiple poses in VR captured by the three different systems. 
We find that participants rated the poses generated by HyperTrack to be significantly more natural than both the depth camera condition and the upper body only tracking condition. They also rated the transition between poses by HyperTrack to be more natural than the depth camera condition. Here are some examples of poses that can be supported by HyperTrack. So these poses shown here, these five poses, are well supported by both HyperTrack and Kinect to VR. For these poses, Kinect to VR start to show some problems tracking the user's legs, while HyperTrack still performs pretty well. For these poses, neither systems generate satisfactory results. We think this is because the posture the user is performing is not part of the 3D training set, while the underlying 2D pose tracker continues to perform well. Essentially, we only need to improve the pose conversion network. It is possible that we can leverage humanoid animations commonly present in VR games to further fine-tune the model towards a specific game. This will ensure that all poses used in a particular game are supported by HyperTrack. So HyperTrack shows a promising future where every VR user can have their full body represented in the virtual world by adding just a single off-the-shelf webcam. Thanks for watching.